This episode of Attack on Titan was so information packed that it took me a second. You know, I had to go back, rewatch some stuff, and really grasp everything that was happening. But I do know this a ton of stuff happened. Even if half the episode was flashback, there were so many revelations. You know, so much that was explained about previous events and future events. It was crazy. This episode was insane. A bit fast-paced at times, but I heard they cut a lot out of the manga. It was, it was great stuff. I really enjoyed the episode. And there's so many theories I have. So many thoughts. It's insane. So let's get into it. The first thing and the most obvious thing is Historia. Okay, let, let's just get this part out of the way because I need to voice my opinion on this. This episode showed us... First of all, that Historia, the queen, was willing to sacrifice herself and become the Beast Titan if it meant humanity's future. This just shows you Historia's resolve, man. Historia, as a character, has gone through such growth in Season 3, especially in Season 2 even. It, it's nuts, right? Her character, she she's so admirable. The way that she's just so willing to do whatever it takes. And yet it's so sad because another part of that agreement would be if she became the Beast Titan, she'd have to bear lots and lots of children. Now, what was implied was that the founding Titan and a Titan of royal blood would have children. That was what was implied. Now, I don't know if that necessarily means Eren and Historia, but I think that's what they were implying. I think they were implying that Eren and Historia should make children. Now, maybe they meant separately, right? The whole point of this was so that they could have more Titans of royal blood down the line. So ultimately, this cleared up something for me. You need a titan with royal blood, right? Like, the reason I wasn't sure was because Eren touched Historia at one point and got to see a lot of memories, but I think that must have just been a fluke because it seems that you need to actually have a titan with royal blood. So I guess Zeke would work, you know, but he's about to die. Like, he's running out of time, so they need replacements. So ultimately, though, Eren was against this whole plan, and yet, two years later... Historia is pregnant. How? Like, what, what the frick, you know? They're, they're saying there was a farmer boy when she was a kid and he'd be mean to her and stuff. Apparently that was left in the manga, but they cut it out of the anime. Something doesn't add up here, you know? And the reasoning is, okay, if she's pregnant, they're gonna wait to turn her into a titan. Which, like, I guess? But that's a flimsy plan at best, and some soldiers were even saying, well, why don't we just turn her into a titan anyway, you know? That seems strange. You know, why would that be a thing? And another theory was that, oh, Yelena made her do it so that Zeke could live longer. But, like, he only has, like, a year left, right? That seems a little strange, too. But maybe? But why would Historia go along with that? You know, there's a lot going on here. But the big thing is people wondering if it's Aaron's child which would be bonkers. And yet, if the original plan was for Eren and Historia to have children, it almost makes sense. Because Eren was against the plan at first, uh, completely. But then now all of a sudden, he went to Marley, he got Zeke, you know, he's all along for the ride. He's down for the plan all of a sudden. And part of that plan, if I'm understanding it properly, was for Eren and Historia to have children. Now, that could just be, I'm, I might be misunderstanding that, but that's sort of what I'm seeing. Like. Something might be happening there. I don't know. I it would be crazy if it was I just it doesn't make sense for Historia to make these decisions There's something going on at the very least. I don't know if it's Aaron's kid if it is my I'm My life will never be the same, but at the same time I don't know like like why would you need the founding Titan to have children with the unless they're trying to do it to activate the rumbling. I don't know, man. I don't know. This is just my understanding of it, so I apologize if it's wrong. I'm just theorizing here, sharing my thoughts. But, dude, Historia's pregnant. What the frick? We also got to meet a new nation in this episode, and it wasn't really new because we'd actually seen this person, Kiyomi, I believe, in one of the previous episodes. She was there for Willie's um, initial speech, you know, and she helped Udo when he spilled wine on, uh, on her kimono, right? and she was like helping him and stuff. She seemed like a pretty good lady, you know, and she knew what was gonna happen because she dipped after talking to Willy, you know. So she seemed very mysterious and we find out that she's from a nation called Hizuru or Hizuru. And it's kind of like a stand-in for Japan is what it seems like. That's sort of what I'm understanding. And Mikasa is kind of their last descendant of their leader. So not only, and this is what confused me, not only is she an Ackerman, that's separate. Right, that's that's the electric power in like Levi and Kenny and blah blah blah. She's also 
from this nation. She has this blood from this nation. And they've actually heavily hinted at this before. And the fact that um, some kind of Asian nation and the, the blood of, you know, her, her family and their embroidery, which, by the way, they changed that apparently. In the manga, she had like a tattoo. In the anime, she made an embroidery. And then they kind of just <laughs> pretended like that didn't happen. And she's always had the tattoo. And it's like, okay. But one way or another, they're like, hey, Mikasa. But ultimately, we find out that they're just kind of using her. They ultimately just want money because they're great people. They want money, so they're coming to the island to get the Ice Burst Stone, which was mentioned in the prequel stories of Attack on Titan. And it's this, the mineral that allows them to use ODM gear, pretty much. And they're like, we could be rich off of this. But obviously, their initial plan was, no, we don't want to do that. So they're the kind of, their relationship was rocky. But now that Eren's doing this plan, maybe Hizuru will be back on board. Who knows? By the way, I really like how when Zeke is showing her that ODM gear and giving it to her as a gift, that's the ODM gear that he took from Mike or Mike, you know, in season two. It's humanity's second strongest soldier, right? I really like, I really like that. Uh, you know, callbacks and connections, even with Historia and the farmer, you know, it's like everything in the manga and in the anime, especially the manga, is included for a reason. And we have this crazy scene, probably the most intense scene of the episode, well, certainly of the episode, Eren and Hanji, right? And this scene, I just cannot believe the stark contrast between this scene and the flashback scene we got with Aaron and his friends, because in that flashback scene, he's saying, you all are so important to me. You know, each and every one of you, I don't, I don't want you to take my Titan because you're gonna live long lives. I love that conversation. My vote will be Jean, by the way. He'd probably be the next best uh, Titan shifter in my opinion. But, you know, ultimately, he didn't want that. He's like, dude, you guys are too important to me. You can't die, right? Me and Armin are screwed, <laughs> but you guys can't die. And then we cut to later and he's freaking grabbing Hanji through the bars. And, you know, and, you know, she was kind of getting on his nerves or whatever, but he was like about to activate his Titan power. It's like, dude, Aaron, what the frick? By the way, he's like really jacked now and like really tall. Everybody's really tall. Connie, you know, freaking everybody is towering over Levi now, which is hilarious. It was crazy. And there was like a weird translation. He was, when he was yelling at Hanji, he was saying, tell me if you have another plan or another option, something like that. In the translation of the anime, it was, um, or like the, the sub anyway said, if you have a plan up your sleeve, you know, like if you're hiding something, but that really wasn't the uh, true translation. So Hanji's, she's in a tight spot. You know, she she's sitting there and she's like, why, Erwin? Why did you make me commander? That got to me, bro. That I was like, dude, Hanji, you're doing great. But it just shows you, you know, I've heard a lot of people say, well, Armin was obviously the right choice because Armin's smart. It's like, yes, Armin is smart, but Erwin was the best commander that humanity has ever seen. You know what I mean? Like, like, dude, <laughs> like that was a that trade hurts so bad and losing Erwin was Horrible. And then with everything that happened, we then cut to the end of the episode, which is Mikisa, Connie, Jean, you know, Armin, and they're all talking and they're debating about Eren. You know, Connie's saying, why was he laughing when Sasha died? And he wasn't really, you know, because when Hanna's died, he did the same thing, laughing and kind of going crazy, right? So ultimately, that's just Eren's way of handling it. Now, I agree. He could have shown that maybe better, but I think Connie's kind of jumping the gun, although I can understand the miscommunication. And then Armin just comes out and says, well, why don't we just, you know, we have Titan Serum. We could have somebody else take Eren's Titan. And it's like, bro, Armin, what the frick? Armin, what are, you, what are you doing? I don't think Armin really meant it, you know? I think he has some sort of secret plan. He's scheming something, you know? And I'm just wondering how this group is going to adjust to everything because Aaron really has changed. He's changed so much. I wanna know why, you know, is, is it just time? Is it because he's running out of time and nobody's doing anything? And that's why he was yelling at Hanji and he's like trying to take matters into his own hands. Maybe that's why he's having errors through Historia. I don't know. Regardless, th it's just crazy. You know, Attack on Titan, it's going nuts. The episode actually ends with Zeke and Levi and there's a full moon, which kind of scares me because Zeke and the full moon, you know, I don't know. But at the same time, there's no Titans around unless he turned everybody. No, that can't be. There's no way. I don't know. There's just a lot happening here. So I'm really excited to find out what happens next week. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed, leave a like on the video and subscribe for more weekly Attack on Titan content. I'm loving season four. Season four is doing such a good job. 
I only read part of the manga, so this is all new for me and I'm really enjoying it. So subscribe for more discussion videos, analysis videos, theory videos, and that sort of thing. And with that, I'll see you guys in my next Attack on Titan review. Take care.